In today's video, let's go together to explore the homes of the last cave dwellers in England. These caves used to be home to 44 people until as recently as the 1960s. Hello! Welcome to Through Lucy's Lens weekly videos where I go somewhere that I think is interesting and hopefully you will too. This week I've come to look at some of the last troglodyte dwellings in England. Troglodytes, people that live in caves, and there were people living in the houses in these caves until the 1960s. Now owned by the National Trust, you can go and have a look round, and it's a fascinating insight into yet another way of life. I can't wait to see them, like a usual, never been before, so let's go and have a look together. You'd never know from the roadside, but this woodland on the edge of the Black Country was home to England's last troglodytes. Four miles southeast of Stourbridge, on the Staffordshire Worcestershire border, Kinveredge is a 250 million year old sandstone escarpment with a network of houses carved into its three rocks. People lived here until they were persuaded to swap their caves for local council houses in the mid 1960s, leaving a 400 year old legacy behind. On the day I visited, unfortunately, there'd been a recent rock slide, which goes to show it must have been quite tumultuous living on these cliffs. So I'm really sorry if there's any building noise in the background as we go round. Before you get to the cottages, right at the top of Holy Austin Rock, you can explore these caves where people have graffitied their names in. You can see dates as far back as kind of 1920. It's really cute to look through them. On a clear day up here at the top of Holy Austin Rock, you can see the Malvern Hills to the southwest and the Cotswolds to the south. Sadly, today wasn't such a great view, but I still enjoyed being up here. Today, Kimberedge is managed by the National Trust, and in 1993, several of the cottages on the 164 metre tall Holy Austin Rock were restored to represent two different periods of history. One cottage was restored to look like it was in the 1860s, and another from the 1930s. Nobody really knows why people started living here, but the first records of human habitation at Kimber are from 1777 when a Joseph Healy took refuge from a storm and was given sheltered by what he said was a clean and decent family. He describes how the rock houses made good homes, warm in winter and cool in the summer. Let's go for a little mooch around the cottages together, shall we? I know we love doing that. Let's go. This cavernous area, now called the ballroom, was once several cottages, and you can see the original floors and divisions. Sometimes this area is not open to the public as it's now home to a colony of rare lesser horseshoe bats. I'm really pleased to know that somebody's still here enjoying the cave life. The people who lived here were farm labourers, hawkers and gamekeepers, and lived here self-sufficiently. You can still see where food was grown with a large allotment and orchard that still remains. Some of the houses were owned, but most were rented. This cottage is fitted from how it would have looked in the late 1800s and based on a painting that was done inside the cottage of a Mr and Mrs Fletcher in 1901. It's thought that the people that lived here were aware that life was better here than down in the smog and dirt of the local towns. The people that lived here lived comparatively comfortable lives, away from society and surrounded by nature. Their water came from the deepest private well in Britain and the easy to carve sandstone made house renovation simple. Space inside the houses was determined by how much sandstone could be dug out Rooms could therefore be larger and ceilings higher than in the cottages and back-to-back -back houses in the towns. Rooms could be divided as families grew and often lodgers were taken in. There were no utilities in the cottages until very late on when gas was provided in just some.
The next cottage is set in the 1930s and this was my favourite one. As you walk around, there's audio of people telling real stories about when they actually lived here and you get a real sense that this used to be someone's really treasured home. It's quite funny really, but when I heard about these being the last cave dwellings in England, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting them to be like real little houses cut into the rocks. I thought they were absolutely wonderful, and honestly, I would probably be happy living in one myself. You don't really see much difference between the house in the late 1800 and the 1930s. And I really like that. It's almost like a peaceful place where time just didn't move. You can see that some of the china and knickknacks are slightly more up to date, but the general feeling in the homes is the same. By this time, Kimber Edge had become a real tourist destination. And the people that lived here thought, do you know what? We can make a bit of money out of this and I don't blame them. The people that lived here were actually really entrepreneurial and they knew that they lived in a very special place. So word got out about the cave houses and people from the black country and surrounded areas would come on their day off as a tourist experience. Because there was nowhere to eat or drink, the people who lived in the houses thought, Do you know what, we can make a bit of money here. So they set up a tea room. And the tea room was actually up here until the late 1960s, after people moved out. I'm imagining that there's loads of people that maybe come here as a child. And I would love to hear about if you've ever visited Kinver Rock. Because it was becoming so popular as a tourist destination, in 1901, a pole and line tramway linking Kinver to Stourbridge was opened. Known as the Kinver Light Railway, for threepenny a pair, it was accessible to all. It just meant that more people could come to Kinver Edge and people started to dub it the Switzerland of the Midlands. It brought people in absolutely massive numbers and in 1905 on Whit Monday, the tram carried nearly 17,000 visitors. Unfortunately, by the 1920s, buses had become more popular, so the railway closed in 1930. When I visited this location, I really didn't know what to expect. I always tend to do my research after I visit a place, if I think it's interesting enough to pop into a video. And this place really did have so much to learn about. I loved finding loads of old photos of people having tea in the gardens, enjoying their day at Kinver Edge. If you want to know more about it, if you just Google Holy Rock at Kinver Edge, there is so much information about the people that lived in these houses. As usual, I would love to hear what you think. Have you visited? Would you like to live in a cave? I actually think I would now, to be honest, after going here. They're not as I expected. I read every single one of your comments about your memories and honestly, they make my day. It's such a lovely place to visit, but on a practical note, it is probably only a 30 minute to one hour experience. But the countryside surrounding it is absolutely sensational. It was a really pleasant surprise that there's still a cafe here. A little bit of warning, there is a lot of steps and I actually found it quite hard going on my knees. <laughs> so I was really pleased to find that there is still a cafe here today, feeding and watering weary travellers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like a lot of British days out, it looks like rain is about to stop play, but not until I have a cup of tea overlooking the Switzerland of the black country, like so many visitors over hundreds of years. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you could subscribe, I would be forever grateful. Until the next one, bye.